Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, boy, I like talking about composition and underwater photography because we can try to compose compelling images without the use of real fancy or expensive equipment and without even seeing a rare or exotic subject. In fact, I've been shooting more and more with a simple compact camera in my Ike Light housing with a simple video light, not even a strobe. And I'm going to show some examples of using this, some more examples in later uh, video tutorials. But in this video, I'm going to hopefully demonstrate how, in my opinion, underwater line can be one of the most important elements that we can use when composing an image. Um, I titled this video line, but I'm also talking about shape. I use the word line somewhat loosely. Most lines are actually shapes of various thicknesses. Uh, actually, the narrowing of a line with increasing distance from the camera is one of the things that implies depth, or two converging lines as they recede from our camera also imply depth. Multiple lines can imply various geometric angles or shapes. So I'm really talking about shape, too. Line can draw the, draw the viewer's eye into an image, or it can lead the viewer's eye to your subject. It can also convey certain emotions or feelings, depending on whether the line is horizontal, vertical, or a diagonal orientation. So in my opinion, use of line in underwater composition is a really important feature, and it's one of the most important things that have, I think has drawn me to what I like about some of my favorite images. So let's check out uh, some examples of the use of line in underwater composition. Thanks for tuning in. Now, lines can be thick, as seen here in this coral-laden pillar, or thin, as depicted by the rope on which this diver is holding as she descends to a wreck. Lines can be straight, as in this cornet fish taken in Hawaii, or curved, as in this image of a snake in Indonesia. Lines can lead us toward a subject as this mast in the foreground recedes and leads just to the wreck. Or they can ascend, as in this mangrove, they lead up to Snell's window, where through it we can see topside, our hut, trees, and parts of the sky. Lines can converge and imply depth, as on this wreck. And here's another uh, instance of converging lines. The descending line of the rope converges with the leading line from the wreck, such that both lines lead, to, lead us to and converge at the diver, who is looking up at us. Here, lines can imply depth by going from thick to thin, as in this pillar ascending to the surface, conveying distance and depth, and depth as it becomes thinner and farther away from us. Even in a macro shot, here this goby is perched on a coral, and it's thick in the foreground, and then it gets thinner as it gets further away from us, again implying depth and distance. Lines can be branching and imply geometric shapes or angles, as in the angle formed by the antenna on this lobster, or as the angle implied formed by the vertically oriented trumpet fish on the lower part of the image, and the, then the diver emanating from the uh, vertical line implied by the uh, trumpet fish kind of at a oblique angle. Lines can be parallel, as seen here with the parallel coral with the trumpet fish, the trumpet fish kind, kind of trying to hide itself or disguise itself in the coral. And I swear this is an image taken uh, way back in 2005 with a re, uh, rudimentary camera and a simple flash. I still love this image. I swear this balloon fish was trying to hide by orienting his chubby body in parallel with the coral on either side of him. Kind of cool. I just love that shot. And here, parallel lines are implied. Also taken with a cheap camera back in 2005, parallel lines are implied as this trunk fish is apparently swimming in parallel to the diagonally oriented uh, rope. Here lines are intersecting, okay, and here the lines are intersecting to form a frame around my dive buddy. This is a different image. In the lower left hand corner you see the head of a lobster and his antenna are going at an oblique angle up and to the right, intersecting with a coral, and then underneath the triangle formed by this intersection of the coral and the lobster's antenna you see my dive buddy's face. On top of that his mask is kind of parallel with the antenna of the lobster. An unusual, I think it's kind of an interesting image. Here, the bright, beautiful purple coral sort of form parallel lines and kind of frame the trunk fish. Lines can also, of course, form patterns like the spines from the sea urchin, the patterns on this sea fan, or this sea star. Finally, orientation of lines or implied lines can convey certain feelings or emotions. Horizontal lines, as formed by this goby, can convey a static or calm feeling. 
Here, the horizontal line formed by the horizon is parallel with the horizontally oriented shark. On the other hand, vertically oriented lines as formed by this pillar might convey feelings of power, stability, or permanence. Here's a vertically oriented seahorse and the olfactory portion of the eye of this uh, conch going straight down. And another thing in underwater photography, the use of diagonal line often adds emotion, drama, or uncertainty to the image. Now, I love this image. All the images so far have always been taken by me. If I show a different image, I'll credit the photographer. Here my dive buddy, Carl Matisse, who I went to Indonesia with, took this wonderfully composed image on a, of a crab on a diagonally oriented coral. I just love this image. Really cool use of the diagonals. Here, the diagonal orientation of the face of this eel, I think, kind of implies more expression. Here's a shot of my daughter, a split level over under, and I like the way this wave is kind of diagonally oriented. It adds interest to the image. And here's a diagonally oriented trumpet fish, and you can see it's diagonal compared with the more horizontally oriented seafloor below it. However, in underwater photography, there's often no horizon, or we can't see the horizon, in which case we can simply tilt the camera for our desired effect, as seen in this um, porcupine fish. And here, the previous image, I just tilted the camera, and now the seahorse is oriented diagonally, and I think it's a more interesting image. So, to conclude, line is one of the most important photographic elements we can use in composing an image. Line can draw the viewer's eye into the image, it can lead the viewer's eye to your subject, it can apply various geometric shapes and patterns, it can convey certain emotions or feelings, and give your image a sense of depth. And I really hope you found this video on the use of line and composition helpful. Thanks for your attention.